yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we are live with Naimish. We we had a nice conversation about a week ago or so, right? Uh, where you were interviewing me on a lot of topics around Unocoin, around uh, Bitcoin, how we got started in India. And so today we thought we would kind of turn the, the camera on you and I would get a chance to ask you uh, a couple of the questions that I, I've been asking everyone now and my, my, my four or five favorite questions. So we'll start with the first one, which is, you know, before Bitcoin, you know, what, it, what what's, your, what's your story? What, what were you, you know, what were you up to before? You know, give us a bit of insight, maybe stuff that you haven't necessarily shared. Awesome. All right. So I've spoken about this with a lot of people and uh, I don't get tired of telling this story because um, I do feel like I have a very unique story. Um, I actually, I graduated from my engineering back in 2010 um, and mm -hmm. I joined, I, I did my engineering in biotechnology. So I had two options. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So I had two options. I could become a scientist mm -hmm. or I could um, take up a job in Infosys whose um, placement interviews I had cleared, right? So I decided to go with Infosys because I was not enjoying the science-y things, right? Because there's mm -hmm. a lot of bureaucracy involved in uh, becoming a scientist. So I joined Infosys. I got myself trained as a software engineer. I used to code on Java and then Within Infosys, I took an opportunity to become a consultant uh, rather than continue as a programmer. So I um, I got an opportunity to sort of start learning Oracle ERP systems uh, and financial. Okay. So I got my background of computer coding. I started learning financials. Um, I learned how financials work and I started building you know software designs as in program designs. Um, so, um, and then I moved out of Infosys because there was no growth opportunity over there because I was in a, I was an engineer, but I was in a higher role. Like I was working in a higher role, but they did not have a designation for me. So I had to leave Infosys and I joined Deloitte. Um, and I continued my Oracle, um, financials with this. I, I moved to Europe. I worked for a client in Europe for a couple of years between 2014 and 2016. Um, and that's where I got like the. Uh, you know, the cultural shock of my life, when you learn as an Indian mm. that the West is not like French, uh, the TV show, but it is different, but it is vastly different than Indian India as well. So what were some of those differences? I'm curious to know. Yeah. What were those differences? You interesting uh, that you asked that. So one of them is, you know, um, uh, the, the ability to just be, you know, open with everyone, right? Like you are not hiding anything. You're just openly talking to people how you feel, right? In India, we have a tendency to sugarcoat everything. So, mm -hmm. and then we have a tendency to say no to everything because we expect the other person to coax us, right? I don't know how much of an Indian experience you have because mm -hmm. you have been born and brought up in Canada, but uh, yeah, you see me? that that one is not actually. I don't. Do, that's a little unnatural. Yeah. But yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah. So uh, so I I had this. So I would go out with friends, and uh, you know we would go out drinking, or we would go out eating, or something. And I'd be like forcing them, like, why don't you have one more uh, drink? Why don't you have one more shot? Because that's how we've learned. Because first time nobody's going to say yes, um, and they would get pissed off, right? That like, why? Yeah. Like, I just told you no, and. No is no, right? There, there should not be any force after that. I'm like, okay. And yeah. I would say no to things, expecting them to sort of, you know, push me one more time. And they would not. Like, it's like do you want that? And I'm like, no. And then they would not ask again. And I'd be like, oh, shit. What did I do? <laughs> right? So that was my number one learning uh, in Europe. And, uh, and while working with people from the US as well, mm. right? That you don't like, you don't sugarcoat. You just say what, you, what is on your mind, right? Uh, the second thing that the most important thing that I learned was that you should live your life. Actually, you Americans and Canadians don't live your life, okay? You guys are pretty much <laughs> like Indians and Japanese. You guys work really hard, uh, right? You have to, we all have to learn from the Europeans to sort of, plan your vacations before you plan your job, right? So I had friends who mm. would plan vacations two years, three years from then, like from the time, right? They'd have their tickets booked for like five euros in Ryanair and they'd have plans to go to Iceland uh, two years later or uh, France two years later. And uh, that's something that I learned that you need to start living your life. Like everything is not about, you know, working hard and making money. 
so that was another uh, amazing thing that i learned over there uh, mm. wait, wait so you were there itself or were you working with people from there I was, or how did that actually i was in poland so poland is more or less what mm. india is to it poland is to european financial services right everyone outsources right, right. their financial services and marketing services to poland so uh, mm. all of europe so in my office my clients are we had people from 27 countries all of europe uh, european people right and they so there was a lot of learning in the office itself um, and there were people from us and people from india and we were just based there we were building this software for them oracle systems for them um, so we got to learn about each and every country because there was phase wise uh, development, right? So we had five countries at a time. So we would learn about their culture. We would learn about their processes and everything. And we would hang out with them for six months and we'd know everything about them. And then we'll move on to other five set of countries. So I got like a full mm-hmm. European mm-hmm. tour sitting in one office itself. <laughs> oh, Interesting. Interesting. And then I just decided to quit. Like I just... I just realized that I'm working too much. And I saw a boss of mine who was the director in the company, who was a senior manager in the company. And he was working on Sundays. We were working on Sundays, um, right? And I'm like, if I am 25 or 26 and I am working uh, 15 hours a day and he's 45 and he's working 15 hours a day, it doesn't make sense, right? Like as you grow old, your work should reduce because you are in the senior manager. So I, it didn't make sense to me. And that became a trigger point for me. I dropped an email to my bosses saying that six months later, when we are done with the last rollout, I'll be quitting. And I actually quit in February, 2016. And I, I did not have any job in hand. I did not want to work for one year. Um, I had enough money to sort of survive for one year. And I wanted to sort of explore what else I can do with life. And then I started making videos on YouTube. Um, you know, learn editing and all. And then Network 18 in India actually um, approached me after seeing some of my videos uh, that they were building an OTT platform for news. Like what Netflix, what do you see on Netflix and Hotstar now? Um, That's for entertainment. They wanted to do something like that for news. That uh, we should have two minute bite news f- f- uh, continuously going onto the platform and people should be consuming it on the app. Um, hmm. So yeah, I joined. I uh, I joined after six months of my break from work um, to just see how it goes, and uh, we tr- we strategized everything over there. Um, but unfortunately, that project never saw the light of the day. It was shelved. Um, so when it was shelved, I I decided to sort of quit and um, again start figuring out what I want to do with life. Um, and I met some of my Deloitte colleagues at the time, and they told me that Deloitte is researching blockchain. And mm. that's how I uh, sort of got interested into learning about blockchain and Bitcoin. And, and I remember this sentence, okay, it's like, these Chinese people are putting up mines and mines, uh, miners and miners, I think he said mines and mines of Bitcoin mining machines. And they're mining Bitcoin, like, uh, you know, thousands of Bitcoin every day. And this guy did not know anything about Bitcoin. This is just how <laughs> he put it in across me, right? And I'm like, what the hell? I have heard of Bitcoin. Let me go home and look it up. And then once I started looking it up, I figured that, uh, all right, uh, there's not much information in India. Uh, I need to learn and I also need to teach people what is Bitcoin. So that's how I started writing about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and blockchain. And I also started learning. Uh, my first account was with Unocoin. Hey, um, hey, 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 hey. Sorry, I, that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, love I, I actually searched on Google where to buy Bitcoin in India and a Google ad popped up for Unocoin that I'm getting free 200 rupees worth of Bitcoin. So um, I joined immediately. I mean, man, the day, I'm still Indian. So 200 rupees was a lot. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, I'm what getting... What year was this? Sorry, 2016? 2017. 2017. In September. Okay. Over three years ago. Oh. Hey, just one quick question. This is a bit of a side note, but I just, I just very curious. So you said you kind of, uh, you know, tinkered with uh, editing. Do you have any like tips? Like uh, I don't know, just generally, like just not, not, not to spend too much time on it, but like, I don't know, like any, yeah, uh, tips for like newbies uh, that are like, like, like that are getting into editing and all that. 
so i think that i movie uh, you have a mac i assume so mm-hmm. i movie does a wonderful job you know just to uh, stick a 10 like a fixed ratio uh, video over there mm-hmm. which is 1920 into 1080 so i for the most part of my jobless life i edited all my videos on imovie mm. uh, right and there's just one layer over another it's a limited functionality over there right uh, but yeah uh, just explore mm. imovie it's very easy very intuitive uh, you know try to like build, like for instance this video right this has two black uh, panels on top mm. of our head and at the bottom of uh, our uh, screen right mm. so when you push it out they are going to be there why not use that real estate right why not put some names there let's say my name over there or what i do or what you do or who you mm. are or how mm. they can subscribe to you like a call to action right right use yeah. that real estate and the easiest way to do it is open canva canva.com create an image uh, you know just and just export it with a transparent background bring them bring it on imovie and place it on top of it place it on interesting. top of interesting so so simple and what's the one if you're if you've been using imovie is there what's the one uh, after that i'm trying to remember what's the uh, the software on apple that the people use yeah oh well, a, final cut final cut, final cut. i have, have never you, used final cut I've okay okay used, i use interesting. adobe Okay, okay, sorry for for going on a d- divergent oh, track there, but, but but okay. So back to your story. So yeah, you were saying. So you're in 20 cents. You bought your first Bitcoin. Uh, you heard yeah. about it in a meeting. I, I bought like 1,000 rupees worth of Bitcoin, mm. and then I started looking up communities, and I came across Blockchain India community, and that's where people told me that there there's Uno Coin, and I'll be very honest, Uno Coin. When they told me that there is also Coinex, and there's also Zepe, and there's also a couple of other exchanges, Coin Secure, mm-hmm. I think, and I started seeing that Uno coin had the highest price for Bitcoin. Okay, mm. like it was it was a great service, but it was coming at a premium. And I did I I did understand how an open order book exchange works, right? So mm. for me, it wasn't uh, there was no inertia to learn it. So mm. I could actually experiment with all the exchanges. Mm. Like for the people I know, uh, for the people who did do not understand order book exchange, who have not dabbled with stock markets or anything. Mm. They would have a hard time figuring it out. So for them, Uno Coin was a great platform. You just come, you deposit, you buy it. That's it. Like it's one click buy, right? Mm. But for me, I wanted to, being an engineer myself, I wanted to sort of try out everything that is available in the market, mm. right? So I I started experimenting with multiple exchanges. I I opened an SBP, which is systematic buying plan on Uno Coin. Mm. I stopped it after a couple months. I started it uh, five months back again on Uno Coin, four months back, and it's still running right now. Uh, so automatically buying Bitcoin every single day. Uh, so that one experiment I did, I started buying book, my show vouchers from Uno coin using my Bitcoins. I've done everything on Uno coin that was available. Right. And I've done everything on any other exchanges that was available by the time we hit November, 2017, I knew everything about there is about to know, uh, about Bitcoin, right? Sorry. There was a, I don't know what that statement was, but I knew there was whatever there was to learn about Bitcoin. I knew that. Right. Mm. So, and then, and then I started working with actually coin Delta. I don't know if you remember the exchange. I do. I remember them. Of course I remember them. I'm trying to remember. I don't know the full story though, or what happened to them. I do remember them. Like this is during the, yeah, yeah. During the 2017, 2018 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd love to hear. Yeah. I think CoinCrunch has a list of exchanges. There was about 40 exchanges in, by the end of 2017 in mm. India, 40, like there was more than three dozen exchanges to exchanges in India. And mm. it was very hard to keep track. Okay. Um, so I started working with Coin Delta and I started getting into customer support. So to mm. understand what is the what are the pain points that people are facing, and every time I come to know like five or six people will report the same issue, I'll do an article on that. Okay, on my blog. It was called it's called finallyjobless.com. I used to write there before CoinCrunch started. So I do an article on that and I get like 50,000 hits in a day on that article because everybody is facing that issue. Right. Um, so I started, you know, using this mechanism to grow my blog. And then uh, from there, I pivoted into creating a completely different blog for dedicated to cryptocurrencies. And that's when CoinCrunch started in February 2018. 
Whoa, that's that's a pretty fascinating story. Uh, I'd love to do a bit of a slow mo walk through some of that. But uh, uh, so, what happened with Coin Delta? Uh, no, Coin Delta had to shut down because the RBI banking ban, right? So, mm. it's the reason that it, every other exchange shut down. Like, why is that they left, or why Coinex uh, shut down? Why Coin Delta shut down? And, and what were and what were let's if you had to distill it down to the top two or three, you know, blog posts or concerns that people had? Like, what well, what were some of the major issues you were seeing? I can tell you because I never forget this. Okay, the first, the one article that received over one lakh hits in like six hours was the article when I just. Uh, you know, when I just wrote about how Coinex is connected to Pentera Capital, um, and also with uh, with people in the you know, um, in I think the the company is called the the payment company in India. I think pay you pay you money, right? So how all these companies are connected? How the people who have invested in pay you have invested in Coinex? And I was like, and I just made a prediction that Coinex is going to be the first one to launch instant deposit and withdrawals because they have these connections with these companies mm. and and it just went viral and it <laughs> happened in two days they launched the uh, instant deposits and withdrawals using cash free and other other payment uh, processors and everything so that was the one one article where i had to like i was i was traveling with my family and i had to stop people and i had to uh, increase the server space and you know because the, the site was falling down <laughs> so i distinctly remember that this happened and the second article that did a lot of mileage was when um, Razorpay decided to stop giving its services to all the crypto exchanges. Razorpay was one of the biggest payment processes giving it, uh, you know, over there um, uh, for the crypto exchanges. I think such as yourself as well and Zepay. I'm not sure who you know Unocoin was using, but Zepay and Coinex and uh, the Coin Delta and a couple of them were definitely using Razorpay. And overnight, people's deposit stopped. And withdrawals stop, and people were panicking like crazy. I think um, I can talk about it now. I think people started rushing to these offices of exchanges, and you know, people started using their contacts and calling cops to these exchanges. All those things I've lived through that drama, man. I don't know if you were here, but that was crazy time, right? December 2017 was, I remember it was December 2017, that's when this started happening. And uh, everything settled and you know calmed down by the end of January, and then Arun Jetli came in the on the first of February and said, "We do not consider Bitcoin as a legal tender." And the news media started publishing articles like, "Okay, Bitcoin is illegal in India," and Bitcoin started dumping. And once again, there was pandemonium, right? And Wait, can you pause there? But that's such a like, like I remember that too. Like it was yesterday, right? But 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 just but just think of that for a second. So. The, the finance minister said that Bitcoin is not legal tender. And then yeah. the news decided to take that and say that Bitcoin is illegal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Just pause there. Like if that doesn't mean someone like you who actually gets what's going on is needed in this space, like, like that, that was the source of a lot of the problems was the, 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 the mainstream news is they were literally just like, not use like that's not the same thing right like saying yeah, something not. is not water doesn't mean that it's water yeah. <laughs> or something you know what i mean it's like that was the day when actually i was planning on launching coin cringe on the 7th february because a lot of things were not ready and i had to launch it on 1st february because of this because of uh mr jaitley right uh interesting doing, uh, yeah. So I, I, I launched and I had to sit down like, and I, because the, the date was seventh because I want to migrate all my posts from my previous blog onto this one. Hmm. Right. So I thought that it'll take me a week to migrate slowly to check and everything, you know, um, uh, you know, just, just be sure that everything is okay. But I forgot about it. I just, <laughs> I just wrote an article. I said, I wrote another article when Arun Jetli came on Doordarshan and clarified his position. I wrote another article when um, Garg answered to uh, Shibani Kashyap, I think that's her name, right? From CNBC. Uh, answer to her that it's not a dead asset. People can tra transact uh, P2P. No, that was that happened during the banking ban. Sorry, I'm confusing now. But yeah, I I I have spent a good amount of my time on Coin Range in 2018 just fighting fuds that mainstream media was creating. Mm, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. impression of Coin Range was that mainstream media has a news. People will come to Coin Range to check if it is factual or not. That's mm. it. 
that's the that's the initial stage i was at like uh, right after launch so and then then it just you know the market's also dump and also there was not much to do afterwards people started leaving cryptocurrencies because they lost a lot of money because they got into all these shit coins and ico <laughs> all of that right and i lost a lot of money as well because i i didn't know better right and so yeah so but then that happens you you have to learn yeah sorry so much so much to unpack man but yeah no i you agree with you that? i agree with you it's i totally understand where you're coming from who lost 100 bitcoins trying to start the business of mining at first right <laughs> yeah way back in the day but that back then 100 bitcoins wasn't all that much <laughs> but it was significant at the time in 2011 or 12 100 bitcoins even if it is worth $1000 the inflation is so much that $1000 at the time was like probably is worth 500 oh, i bought my first bitcoin at $14 Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, $14. So definitely not at a thousand. So I, I was never at that level. So when I say hundred, and I, I I lost, I, I wouldn't say I lost, I would call it invested, learned. No, learned, <laughs> learned, learned uh, is probably the best one. You know, we, we had a good learning experience there. Um, but, I, I, you know, a couple of things, a couple of things. I, I, oh my God, so, so interesting. I didn't even know that you had that lens. That's such an interesting, but just to sum up maybe a little bit. So... So did you say you studied finance then in university? Is that what you said? Or what, no, engineering. You said engineering, then you went into finance. Mm. In biotechnology, and then what, I started bi working. Engineering in biotechnology? Yeah. So what is that? So is that through the engineering track? And so it's like biotechnology yeah, it's or is it through science? And, it's yeah. a B-tech or a B-E degree, right? So it's through science, science. And you need math and bio both. um uh, in your in your you know 11th and 12th or p or whatever it's called in the place where you are 11th and 12th grade do you still um, follow any of that do you still follow that space like biotech and generally what's so happening i got into biotechnology because um the one thing that interested me was that at the time researchers had, had found a way to create hard drive using bacteria wow okay right so uh so a typical hard drive at the time was 180 gb uh like you know your wd western digital hard drives external mm. were 100 180 gb and uh at the time the news was that they were able to create a 1 tb hard drive the size of an ice cube using bacteria and i was like okay i like computers um and i like i i i i don't think there is space for traditional computers right there there was an advisor of mine okay an uncle of mine who told me that it mein scope nahi hai there's no scope in it and i think that that guy set me on the wrong path okay at the time because <laughs> there's a lot of scope in it and uh, so i was like okay so i understand that you know there is a saturation in the it industry what more can you innovate right you know you just the hard drives are going to get smaller but the technology has to change and the next change if it involves bacteria might as well get into biotechnology and study that right study bioinformatics study how the information processing happens and all of those things so i got into it um and what do you know man you are 17 years old you are not a genius you are not a prodigy you are just a normal kid who who has to ask people for information there was no google we didn't know how to google stuff right is 2006 i'm talking about right hey, have 2006. you ever heard of a guy named uh, raymond kurzweil i think i've talked about it in some of my interviews but have you heard of the singularity and all this yeah 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 i've heard about so it so he talks about he talks about like how um the biotechnology revolution will eventually bring humanity to a place where uh where we'll be able to well we're already slowing down the aging process but we'll eventually be able to stop it and then nanotechnology so biotech will help us stop the aging process and then nanotech supposedly will take us into a place where we reverse the aging cycle and in supposedly that's supposed to happen in our lifetime so take care of your health and you might live forever <laughs> and maybe biotech you know maybe all that stuff you learned will come into big big use man in the next 5 10 years cuz uh i didn't learn this is pretty interesting i don't know i don't know hmm? what do you know about the indian uh, engineering educational system but it's shit Okay. Where did you go? Shit. Where did you study? Or I was I was not in an, any Ivy League. Okay, mm. I was in a in a university in Karnataka, like a, it's called Vishweshwaraya Technological University. I've been there. Great. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been inside there. <laughs> oh, 
No, I know you probably for the robotics thing, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was one of I was studying in one of its affiliated colleges. Um, so there was not much like I, I expected a lot out of biotechnology as a, a science science field uh, as an engineering field, but mm. it wasn't much. Like we were just sort of you know doing a lot of mechanical uh, engineering experiments. Um, uh, you know. the steam devices being used under the under the guise of thermodynamics and all that and we were doing a lot of laboratory experiment which a pathological uh, lab does right you know testing your blood mm. group and, you know identifying the bacteria in the in the sample mm. those things so um that there was no scope in engineering so it was all very technical your your education yeah. background was very technical and then and then you had some time where you worked at a company you said then you worked at some at infosys which is like what india is one of india's top it companies right yeah. it's like if second, not the top second, second. so there yeah. you go and, and what was your specific role there like what were you doing you're like programming i was a, so i i i was uh, like for the first 6 months you are a trainee right so you are training in infosys and i was learning um, java java programming interesting uh, but as soon as i got out of the training um we had uh, we had an opportunity to sort of get into uh, business analytics mm. so sort of the a gateway to consulting um so we took it like you know a lot of uh, like 700 people also applied and uh, 25 of them were selected you know after a series of exams and interviews uh so we got it we were the first batch in infosys of 25 people who were actually engineers but are going to get into consulting right which is normally reserved for an mba or a ca um uh in the company that role is reserved for those so they wanted to create cheap resources in consulting and we mm. were the uh, we were the guinea pigs right interesting um, and, and then yeah. after that you 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 kind of felt like a bit of a glass ceiling or something and then you said you moved over to like That's, uh yeah. it was that was it was the deloitte and consulting all after that or was that after the poland experience no the, my poland experience was with deloitte so was with after, deloitte okay got it interesting so, and then and then after that you you had a brush up with uh, you had to, you took some time off and then and then you decided to work with another company and then you then you got into crypto itself is a pretty fascinating background and then i want to kind of so the next part of the so first question is what's your story right the second question is like what's your kind of like your company or your project story and you've been you already touched on coin crime and i think a lot of people already know about it um but it's interesting to hear kind of the beginning of it but yeah just hear it interested in hearing kind of like what like what happened after that and like what's the story been like over the last few years like how would have been some of the big challenges you faced and Yeah, I just curious to know because you guys and how do you guys kind of get to that state where you are where you're at now? Um I think that you know when when I started coin trends I did not know it, it something worked uh, as an advantage for me as well as as a disadvantage right because I did not have any typical media experience uh, I had only worked for 6 months with Network18 you know, I think close to a year with Network18 uh, which is a media company but I was more into the strategy than the um than the media part right editorial part so um, continue all right um yeah so uh, so coin crunch when i started uh, something worked as a like an advantage for me as well as a disadvantage which was my lack of experience in the media industry mm. um right so uh, when i started i didn't know how to sort of approach people to get business because the business of media is buy ads right you you sell ads sorry so you mm. sell ads Uh, you sell ad space on your platform and people pay you for that and you create content which uh, which gets the eyeballs for the advertisement right so i did not know what to charge i did not know how to sort of you know plan a project or anything like that so i just dedicated myself to writing uh, the good content and i was making good money out of trading and all those things because you know markets were going up so um, i didn't care about that and then i lost all a lot of money in the market crash right um, that that followed so then i just uh, learned and learned about how how i should get money right and the the way it worked as an advantage for me was that um if somebody came to me with a like a pr proposal right like a pr agency i just discard them like i just i just don't uh, pay any heed to them so the ceo directly started approaching me of exchanges and of companies or the 
all the co-founders started approaching like okay let's talk about something let's write about uh, us you know why don't we uh, do a review why don't you do a review of our exchange on your platform and that created this network uh of people that i know now right um i can say proudly that every cryptocurrency exchange or every crypto company um in india sort of um is connected to me somehow like i know them like i know the people behind them and most of them actually uh, have uh spoken to me or i have spoken to them in the past and you know we are still connected on a regular basis so that would have never happened had i been a true media guy and i was just you know running a business of making money out of it like the thing that i did not know how to make money out of it it helped build the relations that uh, that sustained until now it is still there and uh, then you know you story oh, what is your re- what is your revenue model then so like i guess you guys charge it is still or- ad it is ads okay okay it is ads yeah. but then you also have another revenue source where you do yeah. like kind of reviews of, of platforms yeah. and things like that interesting okay that's 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 great that you brought it up because it's we are the only first people in india who do that like uh, coin grange is we have started that model so we started a consulting model uh wherein uh, anybody who wants to advertise with coin grange uh, there is no banner ads there is no uh, sponsored articles you uh, pay us to uh, test your platform and we uh, tell you what are the issues that we face and we have the best people here who knows the pain points of indian users we tell you the issues that we are facing you fix those issues and then we write a review and that review is an editorial like you cannot touch it uh, unless there is a mistake of course you can tell us to correct a mistake but if we say a bad thing about a feature you can't ask me to remove it and it has worked everybody is very happy everybody wants honest reviews nobody wants that you know it should be an ass licking sort of a, a content right nobody wants that and everybody was giving that like every pr company in india is sort of saying that okay you are launching something we'll just push it to 100 people and they some of them will write about it you know just write or just push the pr on their platform and when they saw this model wherein they were getting testing for relatively zero cost like very low cost okay i'll not say zero but very low cost and it worked out well for me since march so since march when we pivoted into this model march of uh, this year march of sorry what year march of 2020 yeah okay 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 i think 2019 we we booked the loss okay so coinfinch made <laughs> booked the loss in 2019 it wasn't a great year for business in crypto anyway anyway <laughs> right so uh, we uh, but 2020 has been good uh and this model has worked for us like now now we have uh, then the friends that i connected over ex- exchanges they started their own pr firm and now they are following the same model and they are training the other influencers to do this right so that that is going in the right direction i i would say that i started that model like wherein i started asking people to pay me for testing their products not for advertising mm. so it almost like required a like a a perfect storm of of experience right you could say uh, for you to you know come up with this business model because you needed you had that consulting background you were kind of yeah. a techie you had this business uh, sense uh, you had uh, interest in media and and then all of a sudden you know you just kind of married it all together and and yeah, kind of created yeah. <laughs> you know a, a, like a business right which i love that's awesome um so i just curious so what what's been so it sounds like the re- new revenue model and by the way like you know send us a quote cuz at udokoi we'd love to get your guys' perspective as well um but i i'm just curious so what are some of the i guess what are some in those years though 2018 2019 uh you know booking a loss is obviously one challenge um but you know just remaining relevant is also kind of interesting to hear like how did you guys overcome that because i mean you know no coin we had to lay off almost 100 people like it, things got really dark for us as well and now we're scaling back up but uh but but curious like how, how did you guys ha- manage that did you do some other things on the side were you oh, just crying so, yourself to sleep no i was i was trying to <laughs> no, uh, but we 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 at any at any point in time there were not more than 3 um, salaried employees on coin crunch right it was always the i had always envisioned um uh you know part time or freelancing as the business model for coin crunch uh it's expensive but it 
uh, also takes away uh, the responsibility that comes when you hire employees and when you are a bootstrapped company right um i did approach a lot of investors um i had like a round coming in in july of 2019 by the end of july and people had committed money but then 22nd july 2019 is when the government announced that there is a bill now a draft ban bill right a cryptocurrency uh, banning bill which was in a draft status and so so they backed out uh so again those are the nights when i slept crying right <laughs> but otherwise we had a very lean team like uh, we had always two or three people who were on a payroll and we had freelancers on and off uh, interns on and off uh, doing a lot of work a lot of people actually um, were coming to coin crunch and they didn't and they got better opportunities uh, because of just you know sort of working with us for a couple of days or you know just getting an experience to work with us um i could name a few like um actually no i shouldn't name a few sorry yeah i, I wouldn't want them to be in trouble but yeah so a lot of people actually came to coin crunch to work with us see the 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 coin crunch name is very highly associated with my personal identity right uh, if coin crunch means nemish and nemish means coin crunch like there is now i have a couple of other projects but at the time we didn't even disclose who's working with coin crunch it was always me like i was the face of it and i was always complaining i was always uh, praising whatever good things were happening that was just me like i had people working in the background but never never in the forefront now i've started telling and, people who and, and i mean during those times right so like you said you kind of alluded to shit coins you alluded to the fact that you yourself lost money um like what were some of the learnings right cuz sometimes you know it's like what are they i forget the saying but um you know it, history like if we don't learn from it then we're like bound to kind of repeat it right so so yeah, for maybe some because a lot of people are hearing about it for the first time right bitcoin this paypal everyone's getting into it but what what's what what are some of the lessons that you think you know people might or people should know um you know as they get excited about defi again and all these new things that are happening is how, how, how what's your buyer beware okay um before i answer that i just want to add something all right um i was a very um like i was an advocate of educating people about cryptocurrencies right i was always an ed- advocate about you know ed- going out and educating people but now my stance has changed after all the experiences now i don't say that i need to go out and educate people no i will only educate people who come to me with a question so if somebody like i i i used to put out um, like you know um, a lot of content and i would like you know also freely work for people who just wanted to educate other people about cryptocurrencies but i realized that no no amount of education actually teaches them what they need to do right they will uh, if they start it themselves when they get stuck people when they get stuck they will have questions and that's when you have to be there to explain it to them that's when they will pay attention to what you are saying so i my experience i would say that people are going to make mistakes you cannot stop them you there is no way you can stop them because i there were so many people telling me what not to do and i still did it right um and i'm sure that you would have gone through that and a, a lot of people that we sp- speak to have been through that so i have now i am a staunch staunch believer of the fact that somebody is stuck i'll be there to help them out uh, but they need to learn it on their own like i we don't need to bring them like what what is the saying like you can you can bring the horse to the well but you cannot make the horse drink the water right um so that's the thing so my learning is that people are going to always make mistakes i know it's a little pessimistic uh, to think about it but i think that it's a good thing if people make mistakes early on they stand to uh, you know not lose a lot uh, in the future mm-hmm. right? because when you are 20 when you are 30 when you are even 35 and you lose a lot of money you have a lot of years in your life to sort of make it back um uh, right but if right now you get cocky and i got you into crypto and you just made a lot of money and uh, you just continue it and then later on you lose that and you lose more of your money without an experience because then you're going to have to you're going to have a problem right so i think that people will make mistakes and we should let them make mistakes and then we should get in and help them out afterwards
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I yeah, that 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 resonates. I mean, that, just thinking about my experience with my brother as when we were kids, I used to always tell him what to do because I always felt like I knew better. And if anything, I think that like you know, kind of put a wedge between us. Like when I just realized like, you know what, he's just going to do what he's going to do. And then if he asked me for help and I started applying that more to life as well as like, I used to be very preachy, like, oh, go on stage and tell everyone you have to do this, you have to do that. And then it's just life becomes really difficult when you think like that, that you have to try and, you know, somehow get the word out. Um, Whereas, you know, if you're just like, look, there's going to be other people who are on the same journey. I'll just kind of be a, a guide for them, right? Um, I think that's that's very uh, interesting. Hey, I, I read a book recently called Story Brand. Have you read it? Um, no, I watched a video about it though. Yeah? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really good. It's really good. I, I read it recently. I read it like twice because it was just like super good. Um, but but yeah. Anyway, so back to your story. So um, so so then tell me more about Coin Crime. So what what happened then? Like okay, so you guys are going along this path. You you figured out a revenue model. You now um, you know this move fast forward into this year. You guys have it seems like things a bit more figured out, right? Uh, like to me that seems like a really fascinating business model because you're you're serving a need, right? Like I hate it when it's just like cookie cutter formula. It's like, I think the best entrepreneurs are always like people who are like, okay, how do we service a need? And, you know, telling exchange owners like um, what they're not doing right, you know, cause for a lot of times, you know, they're busy and they have a million things on the go and it's sometimes like tunnel vision and you just think of things a certain way. You don't have time to always see the competitive landscape to the full extent. And so, you know, stepping in and being like, look, we got lots of people who are complaining about this or that um, is always always fascinating. So, okay, so anything else you wanna share on that? I mean, there's a, there's a couple other questions I'm gonna get to that are a bit more, you know, controversial, but but before we get, move on there, anything else you wanna share on the coin crunch? So just maybe at least as a bare minimum on the website and, you know, what yeah, it okay. is, where people can find Twitter handle and stuff like that. So if people wanna get to it, they can. All right. So right now, the model of coin trends, I also want to say that I've always um, said and, you know, followed the ideology that we don't talk about coin trends doesn't talk about the things that are already being talked about in the market. We talk about the things that nobody's talking about, right? We find that information and we give it to you, uh, right? Um, so that was a coin trends model. Now we have sort of started expanding a little bit. We are experimenting with, you know, giving our own um, opinion-based articles on certain things that are pop- that are uh, happening in the crypto and blockchain world. So if you want to go check it out, whoever it's the site is called CoinCrunch.in. In stands for IN. CoinCrunch.com exists, but it's not mine. CoinCrunch.io exists, but it's not mine. Um, so it's CoinCrunch.in. I am for India because and it's we, focused we, for the India market, right? It is focused Most for the India readers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, and even if we are writing about an international company, uh, we do make it a point that we, uh, the angle of the article is that how this is going to benefit Indians, right? Um, or even if we don't give that angle specifically, we just make an editorial decision that this news is going to be good for overall uh, Indian crypto community. So the article might not say that how it is good for them, but we do have an understanding that this is a good piece of news that should be circulating here. Like Because say, for instance, Binance, right? Um, we, we, we always wrote about Binance because we knew that eventually Binance is going to make a move in India. Mm. Um, so we never skipped an article on Binance because a lot of people are trading on Binance in India. Mm. So it has nothing to do with India, but we have to write about it because people should know about it. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, that kind of an um, ideology we follow that news that would benefit Indian community, we should do that. And uh, I'm very active on Twitter myself and CoinCrunch is also, uh, you anybody can follow it's CoinCrunch in, uh, again, the same, the website, just remove the dot and it's on Twitter. Uh, we also have a telegram, lively telegram community of 4,000 people, maybe 500 of them are actively chatting uh, every week. Um, we discuss, you know, what is happening in the industry. We discuss, um, the prices, we discuss technical analysis. We do live streams on YouTube now for technical analysis. We have a couple of team people in our team who are good at technical analysis, right? Who are good at price analysis. So we don't want them 
and every week every wednesday we do a live video um uh, sunny on on youtube and we have these audiences coming and asking questions like should we invest in that and my tech ta guy is going to always say no like no this is bad and this is also a learning we tell them that this is not a good idea the next week they will come and say that do you think that this coin will pump because we invested in it but we told you last week that this is bad like this looks bad right So are, are you guys mostly like a, a Bitcoin shop or is it mostly like everything else outside of Bitcoin no, do or do you guys, yeah, yeah. You guys talk about all the new assets and interesting. We, not new assets, but we have a dedicated, uh, you know, uh, weekly video on DeFi for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what has I, been the uptake on, on the DeFi side, would you say in India generally? Like, do you think people are just loving it and is it still early days or like, what are you thinking? I mean, maybe both. <laughs> people love making money uh, however or whatever they can do to make money they try to do it um, so defi space will survive until and unless people are making money out of it like there's these farming tokens right you're making free money uh, by just putting your uh, you know unused cryptocurrency onto a pool so that's that's incentive enough for people to make money and then what happens is it becomes like a gateway drug right you know like <laughs> like you you're not supposed to do drugs but then you do like one thing and then you it becomes your gateway like and then you start doing it again so you get into defi which is a which is a very novel and very innovative and very uh, you know uh, uh, i think the promising concept but then you go and uh, go on binance and like a degenerate start longing that coin at 20x leverage and you lose money right and that's the thing with bitcoin as well like who you have if you have 1 lakh rupees you don't go and put 1 lakh rupees in bitcoin you put like maybe 5000 if you are very very uh, you know uh, conservative you put 1 1000 rupees and if you are very uh, like you know risk you are a risk taker you put maybe 10000 who puts more than 10% of their entire uh, portfolio into one coin nobody should do that and mm-hmm. uh, that's why people lose like i think the defi is good but people lose because they go all in mm. so uh, just to, just to drill down on that though when you say free money there's no such thing as free money right like uh like cuz there is risk right i mean like there's always risk like these entire networks could including bitcoin could collapse right so it's not like guaranteed free money or anything like that but yeah. i know what you mean <laughs> like they have i, you I know, yeah Absolutely. There's a lot of little things that I kind of don't like about this because, like, they also use like annual returns and things like that. When the maybe the coin's been around for two weeks, it's like they have somehow annual returns. So it's uh, it's a little scary, I think, at times. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I know what you mean, though. You shouldn't just go all in on anything. I mean, I, I usually tell people, I am super bullish on Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is is great. but still it should never represent more than like 1% of your cash flow or net worth or whatever i mean if you're just getting into it that's like max and even that's probably arguably pretty risky and everything else oh it's even more <laughs> way more <laughs> <laughs> um but that's cool man you guys sounds like you guys are really serving a need what else you got on coin crunch though uh, and i mean we've already kind of done an hour I, i wanted to spend the last half an hour talking about some other things too but but you had anything else you want to share on the coin crunch front Okay, so, got, so basically i just sum it up and what's the we've vision got, as well oh sorry sorry continue continue i was going to ask you what's where do you guys see yourself in the next couple of years what what are some of your goals uh all right that's a good question because we are i mean i've not really publicly announced it at all so this is the first time i'm telling someone you're buying tech crunch you're buying uh, tech crunch i wish, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> next well, year there was there was a, a communication with a big uh, crypto media company in between who wanted to sort of acquire uh, coinrange but they didn't because um, as we said we don't we didn't have reporters on payroll right we had people mm. working on freelance they like we can build that like and they did they did build a team in india right so uh, uh, so that didn't happen but uh, i i am of i i have started working and aside from coinrange i'm a, like i've started working with the company Uh, which builds these micro exchanges what it means is like anybody for their own community can open their own exchange 
and they get the liquidity from the centralized exchange right cool. so i can like in my society for instance there are two or three people who are interested in bitcoins so i sit with them and i tell them what is bitcoin and then i i have opened this micro exchange on my own and when they trade um i can they trade on my exchange so they know there is a face associated with the trading so it's a peer to peer model but with unlimited liquidity um right uh, so that that was the pain point that people were facing in p2p that where where do you bring the liquidity from and now we have the liquidity so that is my other focus like i i really love the idea i love the project and i my i my vision for that is that eventually all the indian exchanges in india sort of you know start this so that we can innovate in this sector where uh, where we bring in like the normal stock market model which is like a like an exchange then there's a sub like a broker and then sub brokers who are uh, who are all you know face to face with the user and client and helping them out so with coin crunch uh, i am actually recruiting people right now so that i can reduce my responsibilities from the editorial side because i think that i've spent enough time with the editorial uh, to step away now and give it over to hand it over to someone else uh, create i know uh, i have created the bylaws for coin crunch we have created the ethical guidelines for coin crunch uh, we already experimented with multiple writers on coin crunch who are who are now writing the articles on their own so it's time that we scale it up but i also move myself from the editorial side and get strongly into the business side of it so that's only when i will be able to sort of scale it up so that's the vision um i'll i'll i have removed myself i'll slowly remove myself from the editorial side and i will focus on growing it as a business um and if it like we we have some experimental stuff in uh, our mind to do from next year onwards uh from january 2021 and if it works it works we are taking the fail fast approach if it doesn't then it doesn't and that we'll move on to experiment something else with it mm. that's like we we don't have a proper road map of we again we don't want to go the cookie cutter route right uh, we don't want to take that route we we want to try and experiment as much as we can this is my first startup i want to experiment as much as we can uh, with that um right and at the end if it fails we'll still have a legacy to look up to so i really am taking all the all the risks that i can i just love love uh, you know innovating i love doing new things um and we are doing it and um sunny i know we've spoken a lot already but i just want to add that coincrunch is not just doing videos and articles right we we have built products which people don't even know about like we have a bot which can immediately fetch the liquidity on all indian exchanges we have a telegram bot we have a twitter bot which you just put a command like buy bitcoin worth like 1 crore and it will fetch you exactly how much bitcoin you will get on each and every exchange by uh, spending 1 crore rupees mm. so it took us a month to build that and perfect it right and we did so we have a lot of other projects and now we i i have so many things scattered around i just want to you know focus on them make it a business like make multiple businesses out of it so that's my vision Very cool. That, that sounds that sounds exciting, man. That sounds really exciting. Well, I wish you the best of luck. And like I said, if there's a way we can help, uh, yeah, yeah, let us know. Um, okay, so just to kind of uh, you know um, get to the next question. So the next question I had was, you know, it's like the Peter Thiel famous question, right? So what is one like truth that you hold to be you know true that you believe is true? that most others in so let let's first start with since you're coin crunch you guys are doing the whole crypto space so a uh, a uh, belief that most others in the bitcoin blockchain crypto space would disagree with you on yeah we'll start with there so what what's what's one thing that you believe to be true that most others in you know the blockchain space open blockchain space would disagree with you on um i have to sort of think about it but i think uh the one thing that i truly believe is that um and you would probably disagree with me as well i think there will be a successor to bitcoin i don't think that bitcoin will remain uh, the reserve currency or the reserve asset of the of the world in our lifetime i feel like something will success uh, like su- will be a successor to bitcoin because um i don't know man that's the path like if if monetary system can change over time why not the revolutionary monetary system as well it might change 
So that's something that I truly believe in. Why? Um, why do you believe though? I mean, I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, like what, 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 what's your reasoning behind it? I don't think, so um, I want to add, I don't think that Bitcoin will go away. I think Bitcoin will have value, but as an asset, right? We are already seeing that. Like we are already seeing that Bitcoin is becoming a reserve asset for, uh, for, uh, for a lot of institutions, right? Uh, but I feel like something will succeed it because just, it's not a hunch, but I would say that just because nothing can survive. Like, I, I don't know. Like when I, when I was growing up, right? Um, uh, there was a thing that my grandpa used to say that every business has 10 years. It, it's a decade. Like uh, they grow in that one decade as much as they can. And then uh, they, the growth happens, but it becomes steady. Like, you know, and then someone comes and sort of, you know, uh, dis disrupts the business mm. for the next decade. Right. Uh, and then these guys will again pivot and they can also disrupt it, but there will be someone coming in right now. Bitcoin, sort of has no competitors if you really think about it right mm. a lot of a lot of other coins came tried some some of them are actually doing well now but nothing can beat bitcoin somebody has to beat bit beat bitcoin for it to innovative innovate further mm. and that period will come this is my Mm. It's just something that I, I understand uh, from what. No, but I, I just think is, isn't it isn't it, but isn't that the same statement as like let's say the internet ten years in we were five years yeah ten years in wouldn't it be like us saying something will take over the internet something will replace the internet I have a hunch because other things have done have never lasted yeah. so I'm saying there are certain innovations that come along that do stand the test of time like for example I don't think. Facebook, as much as I hate it, and I don't use it myself, I don't think a social network will come along that will yeah. dethrone Facebook even in the next 10 years because of something called network effects. What I think Bitcoin has in addition to network effects is that it's an open source protocol. So if yeah. let's 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 talk about a real threat, like let's talk about quantum computing, for example, right? Let's say there's a quantum computer that comes in and says, okay, I'm gonna threaten Bitcoin's existence, all the people in Bitcoin can see that and say, okay, we're going to make our, our protocol quantum resistant. Like, you know, we'll do that like now, <laughs> um, or, you know, ideally you see these things coming down the pipeline, right? Cause research innovation is happening. So, 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 and, and the thing about Bitcoin that, to me is, is that it, when it came along, it, to me, it represented like a unit. I think we talked about this in our last call, a unit step function, like a zero to one leap. Like if you look at everything before Bitcoin and then Bitcoin, it's just insane. It's like these crazy, awesome ideas coming together and like creating this like Cambrian explosion of innovation. But then if you look at everything that came after it, and I pick on Litecoin because it's just easy, but like they changed three parameters in the code base, three. They literally just changed three things and they're like, ah, like now we've got the silver to like Bitcoin's gold. And I, I don't know, I, I can't, I mean, I know at Unicoin we do list things other than Bitcoin, um, but it's only for that, you know, for the reason that we talked about earlier, which is that, I mean, those companies don't exist now, a lot of them, but, you know, people think, oh, well, there's choice. There's this illusion yeah. of choice and I'm going to go there because they have a hundred coins. But then I think in the arc of time, people lose so much money on those kind of gambling non-Bitcoin things. And I'm not going to lie. Like I, I push my team every day to consider getting rid of everything and just have Bitcoin. <laughs> I know we would lose a lot of new, fun, exciting young people maybe, but I, I worry because, because to me, more than even making people money, I worry more about losing people money. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So anyway, so, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. right. See, um, I think that you're absolutely right that uh, there are always things that may stand the test of time, um, like Facebook or like the internet. And I do believe that, I think that uh, I'm still in that zone where I've not completely, uh, you know. A Bitcoin maxi? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to become a Bitcoin. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. To be very honest, because um, at the end of the day, you know, if I confine myself to one technology, I might not have an opportunity or I might just be egoistic enough to not really uh, put my head into something else, right? Yeah. So I try not to do that. But obviously, in, in my heart, I know that 
like who what am i holding right that's the question like what am i holding long term i'm holding bitcoin long term mm. right? it makes me bitcoin maximalist anyway mm. uh in one way or other but i do think that 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 uh, leap or that sort of transition of completely believing in the network effect has not happened for me mm. in three yeah. years uh but i still think that it has not completely taken me from one side to another right i still believe that uh some of your cash should actually be in fiat money for emergencies some of, of your assets should be in gold some of your assets should be in stock market and mutual funds right mm. um, so oh no I, for sure i agree in all that stuff and i think i was talking more about like the crypto assets if you will yeah. <laughs> in crypto asset i don't hold anything aside from bitcoin like hey I, I hey 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 sorry <laughs> that's a good one so there you go man there you go there you go so i think so, enough said <laughs> it can happen to anybody right like i think i buy to like ethereum because obviously you know i just want to again experiment right ethereum bitcoin is like an apple iphone right you just do it it's easy Like Ethereum is your Windows PC, which you can experiment with. <laughs> Ethereum is like an Android, which you can tinker with. Right? So you should be with Ethereum. I'm not saying you shouldn't be, but if you don't want to do anything with it, don't be. Like mm. if you're not going to build anything on top of it, if you're not going to, you know, waste a lot of it, you know, trying to experiment with these shitty DeFi projects, then. Why even be in Ethereum? Just be in Bitcoin. Mm, mm. Yeah, I mean, like I always say, I mean, I I always kind of come off a bit negative, I think, towards Ethereum. But I just, I just, uh, I just really love Bitcoin. I have nothing against. I, I, I'm, I'm first and foremost a free market enthusiast. So I just love ideas. The fact that Ethereum exists, I'm, you know, I love that obviously because I want people to try new things. I just, when I think of the free market, though, the The, to, for the free market to truly succeed, we need a proper money, and that is one half of every transaction. Right, is money, and so if we don't get that right, I mean, and the and the only way to get it right is to have a laser focus on trying to accomplish that one thing, which is let's fix the money system. And I find like anything divergent to that is cute and fun and exciting to talk about here and there. But when we look at the arc of time. I think Bitcoin will. I think will it will stand again. I mean, you know, I, I'm not a financial advisor anymore, so don't take any of my advice. <laughs> Ten years. See, Bitcoin has been around for twelve years now. Eleven, let's say eleven. Mm. Like, I don't, right. So, it, um, ten years later, in 2030, right? I don't know where it will be. Like, it could be worth a hundred thousand dollars. It could be worth a million dollars. But it will be there. Like, I never. Mm. I don't want to say that it will not be there. Like, there is. Not an in bone in my body that believes that Bitcoin is going to crash and not survive. Mm. I'm just saying that there could be something that might be considered more important than Bitcoin. That's it. This yeah, is what yeah, I yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree, and Maybe it's water. important to you never know. What? Maybe what becomes a commodity which is more precious than Bitcoin? Yeah, because this guy, what uh, the the guy from uh, from that book, um, the the big shot. Um, mm. the the guy who played uh, who was played by uh, Brad Pitt, I forgot the name of the. Industry. I don't remember his name, but I know you're talking no, about. No, yeah. I've Pitt. seen the it movie. The, the, the doctor Michael Baum. No, I forget about it. I know the movie you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But at the end, some of the really good-looking Hollywood actor. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the movie, this one actor who made billions, one mm. uh, uh, one character in the film who made billions, it says that now he only invests in water, nothing else. So imagine that, right? A hedge fund manager who's made billions is investing in water, and I think that this is going to be the problem number numero uno uh, in the next decade. I think water crisis is going to be that. Like, I not, think Canada has more fresh water than any country in the world. So you're gonna should, be fine. <laughs> I should start putting some in my backyard. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, so actually, wait. Maybe that 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 segues nicely into my into my one of my final main questions. I got a bunch of other quick ones I want to ask you. But uh, same question as last, but as it applies to the world at large. So maybe it's maybe it's that water is the best investment. But I'm just curious. Any other like, you know, I don't want to say controversial for the sake of being controversial, but but maybe beliefs that you believe to be super true that most others would like 100% disagree with you on. <laughs> Um, I, I think that, that yeah. 
No, so I think that in only in the blockchain space, right? No, well, I mean, no, the last question was the blockchain. This one is just the world at large. So again, <laughs> I'll give you an example. Tech- Mine is I think we're gonna live forever. So you go. <laughs> Oh, you think that we are going to live forever? That's wow. my, I guess I would say like one of my non, a very controversial, but non-Bitcoin globally applicable, you know, statements that I could make that uh, people would be like, you're, you're crazy. You're going to die. But, uh, but I believe that humans will live forever and we'll figure it out in the next 30 years. But, but I'm just saying, so any, any beliefs like that, that you, that you want to share? <laughs> I, I do have a belief. I do. I do believe in it. Look, I, I understand that the world is overpopulated. We have climate uh, you know, climate change is real and it's affecting everyone and everything. But I do believe that when the time will actually be very critical, we'll innovate something and we'll just mitigate the risk. That's the truth that I believe. Like, I don't mm. think that the world is going to end, right? Mm. Because of climate crisis. It's just that it's still not affecting every single individual uh, or they're not realizing the impact of it. So they're not taking it seriously. But when people start like coronavirus, right? When start, people didn't take it seriously until the neighbor started to die or started to go into the hospital. So when the neighbor started to be affected, when, when you see people on the streets dying because of this climate change or whatever we are calling it, uh, that's when the innovation will happen and we will rapidly, you know, uh, reverse the effects of it or maybe, you know, stop it over there. Maybe we'll have Is like- Is Tesla in India yet? No, I think oh, they yeah. said 22, I think so. But we have Mahindra. We have Mahindra, which is making great electronic cars and the government is subsidizing it, right? Uh, so, yeah, but it's still expensive, bro. Like like a typical sedan would cost you around 10 to 12 lakhs, which is a million rupees maybe. And a Mahindra subsidized will cost you 2.5 million rupees, like 25 mm-hmm. lakhs. Right? So imagine the subsidy is taken away by the government. What happens then? It's Even Tesla has not figured out the low... Uh, lowering of co- costs for the electronic vehicles, right? But my 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 belief is that the first thing that will happen is desalination of water will become become cheap, right? Because we will have water crisis, and so the the first innovation will happen will be in the you know using the sea water to sort of fulfill the crisis of the fresh water. The, do you know who Dean? Do you know who Dean Kamen is? I know who did that is, and he's built that. And I also know this guy. Um, this Indian origin guy who who used to have this uh, energy shots, five hour energy shots. And he's invested 99% of his income uh, or his wealth into, you know, building these futuristic uh, technologies, um, right? Desalination and, you know, living forever actually, actually, you know, funding that research as well. So, yeah. Fascinating. Um, Fascinating. I do believe that that is going to happen. Right? I don't think that we will die of climate change. That's for sure. Interesting. We'll die of uh, lack of clean water, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully not. Uh, okay, just hold on one second. I'm just going to pause it. Hello. Okay, we're back. Sorry. Uh, okay. Are you, you, you good or? Oh, I'm recording again. Um, you can pause it. I'll uh, pause it. All right, we're back. I uh, got some of those technical difficulties addressed. Uh, okay, so, so, so the next. Okay, so we talked about your story, CoinCrunch's story. We talked about, you know, some kind of, I guess, slightly controversial truths that, that you might hold in the crypto space, also globally at large. Um, some of the topics that I like to sometimes touch on, um, one is artificial intelligence. I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on, on that one. And then I kind of dovetail into, uh, you know, this universal basic income and something that is kind of happening already at a global scale, but what your thoughts on and, and I, I think they, they, these two conversations kind of play into one another, right? Because the, the, the end thing is, is like, well, what if AI replaces all of our jobs? Like, what are we going to do? But, but curious to know your thoughts on it. Um, okay. So I think that, um, you know, AI is pretty interesting. And I would say that, um, you know, a lot of innovation goes into that even in India. Um, and uh, I don't agree with Elon Musk, who thinks that it will be the end of humanity. Um, I think that AI is controllable, but I also don't know how far we can get with it, how, how far it can get, right? Can it become like a Terminator sort of a situation uh, where it just, you know, sort of uh, imprisons all the humans? I don't know. But I do love reading about it. 
I do love, um, I, I don't dabble with it myself, but I, I have my team, you know, research about it and then they look it up and they try to uh, build this machine learning algorithms. We, we actually, for CoinCrunch, we actually use Google's natural language processing and a little bit of machine learning uh, together to sort of, you know, create articles uh, on its own. You know, rather we don't have to interfere and we don't have to write the articles to create articles out of multiple other uh, um, uh, posts. So we did dabble with it once, but it didn't quite turn out to be the greatest results. That's how I know that AI is not going to kill us all because it's still very, very, very nascent. Uh, but I do, I do have high hopes for it. And I, as I was saying earlier, uh, you know, to someone that um, uh, the industry that innovates the first is porn and porn has started using AI. So I'm sure that in the next few years, we will start seeing it in everywhere, everything and everywhere. So, and then UBI, right? You, you, you told me about UBI. I don't know. I think that UBI is a great, great innovation that, that could actually benefit um, the population of the whole of con whole countries. And uh, we have a video series on uh, CoinCrunch actually with um, Sunil, uh, Sunil Agarwal, who's the author of the book, The Bitcoin Magnet, um, right? And Sunil Agarwal, you know him, right? You probably know him. And uh, in the initial yeah. years, he was, he was wanting to, like he was in touch with you guys, I'm sure. So uh, Sunil Agarwal says that we should have a data-based dollar, like a data-based uh, cryptocurrency. The amount of data you used, you get like a, um, like a token for that. And that could be your UBI, right? So I like that idea as well, because a lot of people are now, um, you know, using data, um, data in the internet, right? So how can we monetize that for them? Um, so that could be one way of going. I think UBI is going to be great. Um, and AI and UBI, as you were saying, go hand in hand. Eventually when AI takes up all our jobs, uh, maybe UBI will be a great thing uh, for everyone. But then I think that I would like to um, sort of bring up an example from the book Sapiens. Have you read it? Uh, yeah. So he says that, you know, we started, <laughs> it should be there. It, I think it's one, there in my shelf as well. So yeah. Uh, there's one thing that he says that when we started farming, we thought that, uh, and we started settling, the humans thought that it is going to be beneficial, but eventually that was the uh, beginning of the doom of, uh, you know, um, humanity because uh, people just started settling and having more babies and they were working all, uh, you know, nights and days together to, uh, you know, feed them and to fulfill them. And they had a lot of time as well. So eventually it led to this, lethargy that we see right now wherein uh, we are dependent on our food on other people we are not really hunting hunter gatherers anymore we don't really you know um, learn a lot of things an average human being doesn't learn a lot of skills in its life in his or her lifetime anymore right they just they just get up and do the mundane thing that they are taught from in school in at home and all those things so I think that it could be affecting affecting us negatively. We'll just be too much lethargic and too much complacent to do anything after that. Once we start making money on it uh, for free, and if AI starts taking up the jobs, it'd be like the movie Wall-E. We would not even be walking on the uh, you know on the floor. We'd have like a fl uh, floating flo uh, like a bed, and we'd just be sitting on it and roaming around everywhere. Could be that in about a thousand <laughs> years. You never know. So that could also be happen. That could also happen. You never know. You never know, right? I was just gonna just quickly share my screen with you on something. Sure. Let me know when it when it comes through. Can I you can see? Can yeah. you see this open AI? <laughs> so, have you read this? No, Wally. I just laughed at Wally. So, so yeah, Wally, right? So, so, so this this guy, Mar uh, I probably don't even know how to say his name, Marouz or whatever. Uh, this guy, he's like uh, a Bitcoiner. Okay, he's kind of like a famous guy. He's been around. I, for I have read. You read this. No, before you tell me, is, is this the same thing? The, the guy who went on top in Hacker Noon? Big Bitcoin talk. Bitcoin, Bitcoin talk. So it's okay, no, okay, so this is what he does. Okay, so he goes, he's like, look, I, I learned about GPT-3. I took GPT-3 and I ran an experiment where I essentially went on to Bitcoin talk and put little, you know, messages there. And then, you know, based on the feedback, you know, they, they did this, they ran like experiments and whatnot. I chose Bitcoin talk as the target environment for my experiments for a variety of reasons. It is a popular forum that so he goes and does this like elaborate test using GPT-3. 
okay, on Bitcoin Talk. And, and then he goes on to say, I was uh, recently watching a podcast about OpenAI. Okay, anyway, so this system is an early prototype and its behavior is not comparable. So it's just like this awesome article, okay? So I, I'm like sk skipping through all of it just on purpose here. But th th this at the end, he goes, now for the fun part. He's like, I have a confession. I did not write the above article. I did not perform any such experiments posting on Bitcoin Talk. In fact, I haven't used the forum in years, but I did it on my own blog. And then he goes on to say that this is all he shared with GPT-3, with OpenAI. He didn't program it. He didn't learn some language. He just like gave it. I studied computer science here, here. Here's my website. That's it. And it essentially generated, auto-generated 10 blog posts. And then he said he picked one out of the 10 that sounded most like his voice and put it on his freaking website. I was like, yeah, this is amazing. Uh, and Okay, so it so, 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 so came up with that idea of doing Bitcoin talk. I was like, okay, yeah, go ahead. If this, <laughs> this blows your mind. I'm going to blow your mind further. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, guy, I'm gonna stop share. You go. There was a guy who used GPT three to write blogs on Hack and Noon, and his blogs consistently topped the charts in terms of you know uh, engagement. Scary. All of the posts were written by AI, OpenAI's GPT-3. So Bro. I thought you were talking about that when you started. It's probably off. similar. It sounds like a, well, it is not even. It's it, it maybe GPT-3 learned from that experience and did this or something. I have no idea. And it, all GPT-3 did was it knew exactly which keywords to use for uh, engagement and it used it. And the articles were very well written and they just topped the charts. And then this is scary, right? And like, imagine like we were using Google natural, natural language processing and machine learning, and we are trying to build this thing and somebody else is already like 10 steps ahead of us. Like how do, how does one sitting here on this chair or in India or you sit in, unless you are like really engaging with the community, uh, the, the community that is on top of you, um, uh, you wouldn't know what is happening in the world. Like you'd, you'd still be in that shell or well, you know, uh, uh, and that you think consider your world. Like I, I was shocked when I came into crypto, like, wow, this is a world unknown. Right. And then I got shocked again when I got into this exchange business, like, holy shit, there's another world itself. Right. Like when I started consulting this company that, um, you know, that ma they're making an exchange and like, shit, like there's a lot of things happening and you never know about it. And this, how do yeah, you yeah, yeah, and I think AI is one of those things that uh, yeah. I, I always wonder, like you know, how it will. Wait, was there something you were going to share, or no? Sorry, I was going to share one more thing with you. There's another project that I'm kind of excited about um, on the Ubi front, and by the way, I'm not like part of any of these things, right? I'm just like excited about it. Uh, this is by a guy named Yanni, uh, who is the founder of Etoro. Have you heard about it, oh, Etoro? Yes. So this is, it's called the world's first, and I'm not usually found, you know, promoting Ethereum uh, based <laughs> projects, but this is one that I actually like, and I, I am intrigued by it's, it's trying to do Ubi without governments, but on the blockchain, universal basic income. And it's kind of, you got to kind of read through it. It's a bit, you know, interesting to say the least. I, I want to have Yanni on the show one day and then kind of have him take us through it. But it's fascinating. It's fascinating. They're, they're essentially, like I said, they're trying to solve this Ubi problem by using kind of a blockchain-esque solution. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe you know, maybe there's, the, maybe, maybe uh, and I've kind of, I've written a blog about this, but maybe humans will figure out how to uh, take like the profits of automation somehow and maybe figure out a, a fairer way to distribute it uh, as opposed to like just having two billionaires in like three country states or state states like countries rather that like control this like you know this like whatever this is that, like this thing i think that's an exciting thought but I, I do think that it's a little optimistic too optimistic to be honest because people are good in general right but the people in power are the ones that are greedy right once they they are greedy the good people can't do much like maybe with blockchain it will it will change that's the only hope that i have with blockchain like you know once the power is back in the hands of people it can change but mm. so far for the past few hundred years it has been in hands of few people uh and they are they have been exploiting it right so yep 
Yep, 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 yep. So couldn't agree more, man. It is still hopeless optimism. Maybe in ten years we'll know for a fact that what is, what will truly happen, right? Yeah. But for now, I, yeah. But then there there has to be hope, right? There has to be hope. Yeah. So, dude, Bitcoin, AI, you know, reversing the aging cycle, some interesting topics. But uh, what else? Well, oh, I guess my final question will be: Is there anything you know in this kind of tell-all? uh that i didn't ask or i forgot to ask that you wish i'd asked um no you actually gave me a lot of time to talk about coin trends and i blabbered away and then you gave me enough time to talk about weird stuff which is this and you heard me talk about shitty things like you know uh maybe bitcoin is not going to be the coin of the future maybe you know water is going to be the thing we should be investing in those, <laughs> those thoughts those, those thoughts people find it people don't find the patience to actually listen to those you know um uh, and and it's 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 kind of like really good of you that you know you you listen to me and you placed your arguments and then um you know you again heard me you know sort of refute it uh, as well um, so good on you man i think that you, i think i have gotten more than i had expected i thought that i'm coming here and just talking about coin crunch and that's it and this is a lovely conversation and a lot of lot to learn from you um you know even i feel that our last call i learned a lot while editing the video i learned a lot again and then now uh, talking to you again i'm learning a lot um so yeah we should do this like we should i'm do down this. i'm down whenever yeah. you're free man you have my link thing you can book me anytime you want i'd be down to do a resync whenever like weekly i mean i'm th- there's so much interest in this space and this is my reasoning for doing all this is that i just want to you know give people a bit of a, like a nuanced view on things and i find like there are a couple of good podcasts out there but they don't i don't know i find like they're they're still very surface level like they're not like a lot of those people they haven't been here for 8 years they haven't built companies yeah. in the space they haven't been in the trenches and so yeah. it's hard to ask like really hard hitting questions sometimes if you don't know what's going on in the trenches so this is part of my reasoning hey uh, before we do close this i did want to mention just to maybe a couple things if it's okay um i wanted to just i i bit my tongue earlier i didn't want to say anything about uno coin or whatever but you did bring up something which i wanted to speak about if it's okay with you regarding like uno coin you know being kind of priced out of the market early on we were a little bit expensive so i i and and a couple of things so pricing um second is is order book exchange and then the third thing is is like listing of coins because i i could if i had to be like critical of like ono coins offering um those are maybe the three things that i would also you know complain about and have internally since the beginning um but i just want did want to say is, is like okay first of all on the order book exchange so i don't know if you know but i worked for a company called buttercoin back in 2012 yeah. and that we were back by google blah 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 and it was an order book exchange um and so i was in the game of order book exchanges before the game really even existed in a big way and so we have always been very aware of that platform and the importance of it um but you know internally within the team there was always this debate of do we bring it now do we bring it later because of the complexities that it brings and 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 our goal is always like serve the masses you know we're not really like trying to just cater to traders per se um it, it's more for like that and so that was one of the reasons i i faced a lot of you know internal struggles to try and get that out but we do have uno dax which is being rolled into yeah. uno coin and you know competitive pricing there is 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 it'll take a little bit of time still but i do think that we'll we'll get there and you know having work for companies like kraken and all that like i i i feel like we have all the ingredients to to really ramp up our our order book exchange and that also addresses the price issue is that you know if you have a brokerage platform you're always going to have a bit of like spread you're going to have fees and we're not super ashamed either of having you know charged people a bit of money because it was that which which enabled us to actually fight the court cases and stay alive yeah. for two years and and even though a lot of the companies that came in between and my criticism about some of the companies that came in between is that they came and listed every coin under the sun i won't name which which companies but some of them we even got word that their main strategy was to find the cheapest coin and list it yeah you we talked about it extensively in the last video actually yeah yeah so 
So anyway, so I just wanted to say is, is that, you know, it's not just about making money. It's about no. like doing what's right and standing no. by your principles and, and, and trying to navigate these like, you know, kind of crazy waters. And I'm not saying we're right or wrong, but oh. we're always just trying to make like, you know, the I, best kind of calculated decisions. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. Okay. Um, when, um, like I, I have a writer um, in CoinGrinch, right, who I pay maybe upwards of $50 an article. Like he just, he just gets paid that much. Right. And that's a lot of money to be honest in India for a writer. Um, and then I have a writer who I pay upwards of maybe $5 an article. Right. But there is no one who I pay $1. Like that's not the quality that I want anyway. Right. There are people who write, who will write for $1 as well. Uh, so in that context, um, right. If, if, if my competitor is going to go and get those writers for $1, he's going to have five articles for the amount of money that I am paying for one article. So if I do two articles, they can effectively do 10 articles for the same cost. 10 articles means that you're throwing a lot of shit at the wall and something will stick, right? And when something sticks, they get the head, uh, eyeballs, they get this, um, you know, uh, uh, when they get the eyeballs, they have the views, then they charge more to the clients, right? It's just, cookie cutting sort of a formula, right? So the way I deferred was this, that I will pay any amount of money to a good person who's going to uh, work with CoinCurrents, right? And I will charge any amount of money to the people who want to advertise with CoinCurrents. Like I'll be still competitive, but you can't come to me and say that I'll give you $50 for one ad. No, you have to come and give me 300, right? You have to come and give me 500. You have to come and give me 1000 for a certain thing, right? That is going to happen. Will not get you a million views, but I'm sure that you'll get the views from the people who matter the most because they follow coin crunch. And I think that the situation with Uno coin was the same. When the other exchanges came, I was excited because I, as I said in the video earlier as well, I knew what an order book exchange is. I could sense the difference, right? And that's why I, I experimented with the other exchanges. But 99% of the people did not. Why? Mm. Because you are comfortable with the experience that they were you are giving, and that experience comes at a premium. So be it. Mm. Like we could criticize it, we could make fun of it, we could make memes around it. There are memes in Telegram on Telegram right now around you know uh, Uno Coin and Zepay's pricing. But but what? You still were the pioneers. So how does it matter? You brought Bitcoin to masses, right? Yeah. Um, and that's all that matters. Um, and I love yeah. it. To be honest. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. No, I, I just wanted to call out that pink elephant. You know, I didn't want to have this recording oh, go out and I, you just sit here I, silently. <laughs> I said it, if you, if I said it, in, I, I never meant to say it in the negative light. Okay. No, no, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. I, I, I'll be honest with you. Okay. 2018 was not the time when I would have appreciated, uh, you know, the pricing that you had. Um, I was unhappy and I was also vocally telling people that there are other exchanges. If you just put in an effort to learn how to use an order book exchange, you'll save money uh, right on the, on the, uh, on Bitcoin that you buy. And that's the right thing to do. Uh, and if they want to, if they don't want to put in that effort, they can go with Uno coin. But 2020, I have an SBP with Uno coin, despite the fact that you have still a premium on Uno coin, because that's the way you will make money. There's no other way, right? So I have a SBP on Uno coin because it's easy. Yeah, yeah. So okay, exactly, we've always is, optimized yeah. around simple, secure, easy, and not necessarily around just like, you know, the lowest price, but, but yeah. we do recognize I recognize from day one that that obviously people are price sensitive and 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 ensuring that we need to meet them there is is critical. So we're we're making a lot of moves, you know, in the next couple of weeks, next month, you'll see our price will be very very competitive, even uh, hopefully better than the rest. And so and and then so hopefully that won't be. And, and like I said, Uno Dax, which we've been considering more in like a beta state, is going to get rolled into Uno Coin. We'll we'll push it out to all of our customers. Okay, and, yeah. My iOS. Yeah, yeah, it's already yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. Okay, man. Uh, wow, that was long. Uh, you know, you're patient with me. Uh, like I said, next week, whenever you're you want to do a follow up, I, I'm game. We could we could you know we got my story, your story out. Now we could have more just like conversations about the like, stuff that's happening in the industry, what's right, what's wrong, uh, or at least according to us. And uh, yeah, yeah, we could do that if you're down. Yeah, we should do it. 
It, it, not for the next three weeks. I'm getting married on Saturday. Oh, oh my God. Oh <laughs> God. No, 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 no. I don't want to compete <laughs> with your wife. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so just, you know. The Let, let's do a follow up after you're married. And, yeah. and tell oh, yeah. us what life is like I, before then, and after yeah. crossing the chasm. But I, 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 I need those uh, tips from you about you know, uh, married life, right? Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try and prepare some for for that. I don't know if I can provide too many good ones there. But yeah, I was get... huh before. Before, before, yeah, no, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 I was going to say is like, you know how um, recently like MicroStrategy is like now putting Bitcoin in there, like $500 million. Um, then you've got like Square and it's like kind yeah. of a trend now, right? Like more and more companies are putting it. Someone tweeted saying that, you know, we, we, they just removed, um, what's it called? A like career risk from, you know, if you work for a public company and you're like the CFO or someone and you're like coming to your boss saying, hey, we should consider this idea. In the past, you would have probably gotten fired right then and there. Now you're like, well, look, here's some examples, right? So so what, what they did is remove career risk. I, I always thought, well, why isn't anyone talking about marriage risk? <laughs> like just saying oh, that yeah. you're in Bitcoin is like, good luck finding a wife. <laughs> like some people would think you're crazy. <laughs> Hey, you don't have to talk about your Bitcoin investment in your prenup. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> right? You can trace it. <laughs> so we could do an episode on Bitcoin and marriage. How about that? <laughs> I would love to do sure? that. <laughs> I would love to do that. We could do like an hour and a half on that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Would love that. 90 minutes. of Bitcoin Right? And- Who's done that? Who's done a 90 minute session on Bitcoin and marriage? And that would be rich content for the world, man. Yeah. Okay, listen, I don't want to take up your whole day. This has been awesome. No, Fun right. as usual. Right. Is your Let's wife into Bitcoin? Before you go, just tell me that. Is she? Hundred percent, hundred percent. It took her when I got that Buttercoin job. That company flew us from Bangalore because that's where I was living at the time to San Francisco, and in the process, I had liquidated a little bit of my Bitcoin so we could go shopping in San Francisco. That was the piece. Like, and to this day, <laughs> if you ask my wife, I'll do an interview with her someday. But she's. She, she said that was the point where she was like, holy shit, this is real. Like you can actually buy things with it. You can fly around the world because of it and this and that. Um, it took her some time. It took her some time. I'll never forget one day I was like, okay, sweetie, sh- okay, I'm thinking between silver and I don't know why. It's like, I'm just really into so silver or Bitcoin. Like where, which way should we go? And she was just like, come on, like seriously, Bitcoin? Like, <laughs> I don't know. That's about Vinci, it. right? I think that I was watching earlier videos of Vinci after we had the interview and uh, he was talking about silver and Bitcoin 10 years ago. 10 years ago, dude. And he recently had his YouTube uh, channel shut down, I think for a little bit. I mean, that's... Exactly. He's back, right? He's back. Okay, good. So yeah, Da Vinci, big fan. I don't actually know him personally. He's in a couple of WhatsApp groups that I'm in, but I have nothing but respect for that guy, man. Like he was talking about it before anybody and doing like some some in-depth stuff. So I mean, it's really because of guys like him that I'm kind of like, okay, I'm not Joe Rogan, but I'm going to start doing something because, you know, life is short and... uh, You need need, and you can become Joe Rogan. Yeah, I mean, not that I even want to, but... You know, Joe Rogan does it with like martial artists and like certain types of people. For us, no, it's Bitcoin. Joe Rogan watching. has a team of 20, 25 people who edit the videos, right? You need that first, okay? You need a <laughs> yeah. You need right. a studio. You need to fly me to uh, Toronto and then Done. you have to do the interview over there. That's Let's when, do that's it. Joe let's Rogan. do it that'll be our goal okay in the next six months or something to a year after this whole thing is done let's make it happen buddy all right man we'll call it a close here and then uh yeah let's let's get together again soon